don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. I did it. The biggest book haul I've ever hauled on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. My name is Floss. This is the Grape Jelly Library, and I love to talk about books, and I love to buy books, and I love all things books because I am bookish. I cannot thank you enough for coming to spend this time with me. I know your time is very, very valuable, and I so appreciate that you're giving up a smidge of it to spend with me. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for that. Okay, so I don't even know how many books that I have, but I have the books. So I'm probably not going to tell you what these books are about, or we're going to be here until next Tuesday, but I will go through them. And if there's a book that catches your eye and you want me to further elaborate on, just comment below and I will gladly give you the gist of that book. All right, so let's start oh my goodness i am so excited i said to myself floss get reading get reading stop stop dilly dallying i've been closing the pool up i've been eating baba ganoush i've been, <laughs> I've been just doing things but i said get reading because i just came from barnes and nobles now and they have so many fabulous books out there i just want them all and i just want to read them all but <sighs> Alas, I can't. I have to calm down, calm myself down because you know what? I get, I, I come to life when I go in a bookstore, especially when there's so many great choices out there. And now happens to be a great time to shop your local Barnes and Nobles. Oh my God, the possibilities are endless right now. Incidentally, yes, I couldn't get that out. My apologies. It was jam packed in there. I couldn't believe all the people were that were in there. It was like a hop in place. I love to see it. Okay, let's get into these books. All right, so let me do that. Okay, now, A Dreadful Splendor, B.R. Myers. Be careful what you conjure. Oh gosh, I just have to say a little bit of this. In Victorian London, Genevieve Timmins poses as a spiritualist to swindle wealthy mourners until one misstep lands her in a jail cell awaiting the noose. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. The next book I chose, Erasure. I chose this because it seems very interesting. The Elonious Monk Ellison's writing career has bottomed out. His latest manuscript has been rejected by 17 publishers. Um, blah, 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 blah. His aged mother is fast succumbing to Alzheimer's and he still grapples with the reverberations of his father's suicide seven years before. All right. Oh my goodness. The most. Um, all I'm going to tell you about this is this housewife and mother, the family go to church and she does not. She stays behind. She goes in the swimming pool and she doesn't come out. I don't know why, but I'm going to find out. I feel like, I feel like it wouldn't be spooky season without a Riley Sager novel. And this one, this one has me middle of the night. And I sing that Billy Joel song every time I read this title. Um, I've read all the Riley Sager, Sager's novels. I haven't. And middle of the night is my new favorite. Okay. So it's sweet and spooky. Unsolved mystery, childhood friendships, things that go bump in the night, plenty of 90s nostalgia, and a twist I never saw coming. Okay, I am there for that. You know what? I don't think I have ever read, I don't think I've ever read a book with 90s nostalgia. I must calm down. I'm too excited. I have a bunch of books to get through, and I can tell my energy levels are through the roof. The next book I chose for the title and the cover. When you see the cover, you're going to say, oh, now I understand quickly while they still have horses by Jen Carson. All right. So, um, 
story of a prize-winning author Jan Carson's collections, surreal and darkly comic look at life in post-conflict Northern Ireland, from first loves to strange relationships, thrills and terrors, growing up to the dangers and challenges of parenthood. She infuses her stories with empathy, dark wit, and speculative edge, crawling perilously toward the sea. Oh, their baby, their baby is crawling perilous, perilously towards the sea. Oh my goodness. In Granso, the ghost of a car's previous owner haunts the back seat. The troubling water, a rumor of miraculous healing, creates chaos at a public swimming pool. Hmm. Hmm. These stories are pure magic. The short form of it is absolute best. Jan Carson is one of the greatest of the modern fabulous. Donnell Ryan, author of The Queen of Dirt Island. Hmm, the Queen of Dirt Island. Hmm. My brain went, you don't have that one. And you would like to read that one. I need to stop. I am, I am vicious. I, I am vicious with this book buying right now. I need to bring it down. But you know what happened? I was on the book buying band and I am making up for lost time. Even though... I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. A magical detective dives into the affairs of Chicago's divine monsters. Exiled Augur, who sold her soul to save her brother's life, is offered one last job before serving an eternity in hell. When she turns it down, her client sweetens the pot by offering up one payment she can't resist. The chance to have a future where she grows old with the woman she loves. To succeed, she is giving three days to track down the White City Vampire, Chicago's most notorious serial killer. If she fails, only hell and heartbreak await. How am I doing so far? I told you I wasn't going to tell you what these books are about, and look at me go. Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. For Sally Diamond, people are unpredictable, hard to read. She's always preferred routines to spontaneity and silence to noise. Suddenly, Sally herself is in the spotlight. People everywhere are digging into her past. Sally is learning things about herself and her family that she never knew before. Stranger sends her family a teddy bear in the mail. But why does he call her Mary? I'll leave it there. This one is gorge, gorge, gorge. It reminds me of chocolate chip mint ice cream and the purple accents finishes it off exquisitely love it love it love it love it masters of death by olivia lake viola merrick she's struggling she's a real estate agent and a vampire her biggest problem currently is the house she needs to sell is haunted the ghost haunting the mansion has been murdered until he can solve the mystery of how he dies. He'll refuse to move on. Fox Demora is a medium, and though he is also most definitely a shameless fraud, he is entirely without his uses, seeing as he's actually the godson of death. Don't tire out on me now. We still have a bunch more to go. The Friday Afternoon Club by Griffin Dune. Oh my goodness, when I read this, I just had to. I had to. At eight, Sean Connery saved him from drowning. At 13, desperate to hook up with Janis Joplin, he attended his Aunt Joan, Didion, and Uncle John Gregory Dune's legendary LA launch party for Tom Wolfe's The Electric Kool Aid Acid Test. At 16, he got kicked out of boarding school, ending his institutional education for good. In his early 20s, he shared an apartment in Manhattan's hotel with his best friend and soulmate, Carrie Fisher, while she was filming some sci-fi movie called Star Wars. Can you believe it? Star Wars. And he was a struggling actor working as a popcorn concessionaire at Radio City Music Hall. A few years later, he produced and starred in the now iconic film After Hours directed by Martin Scorsese. 
In the midst of it all, Griffin's 22-year-old sister, Dominique, a rising star in Hollywood, was brutally strangled to death by her ex-boyfriend, leading to one of the most infamous public trials of the 80s. Oh my goodness, this book is just going to be a whirlwind of excitement. The next book I chose because I like to support local independent authors, and we had one in the house the day that I attended, um, Barnes & Noble's. You could buy book one, book two, or like I did, book one and two. This is Hope by Jean Estelle. This is a dystopian um, story, and I'm not good with dystopia. I mean, I shouldn't say I'm not good with it. I do read it. I read it sparsely, sparingly, and sporadically. But um, if you need support, I'm your gal. I'm going to try and support everybody I can in whatever way I can. Oh, yeah, I'm going to explore this world of dystopia. So I asked her what this was about. She briefly told me nuclear war. Um, a community was discovered living underground within that community. There was some things that were going on that were kind of hard, hard to get past, um, hard to, you know, when you put a bunch of people together and you have all these different personalities going and sometimes it's not a good thing. Sometimes it's a lovely thing and sometimes not so. But um, I'm going to put all of her information in my description. So be sure to check it out and you know, check out her other social media accounts and maybe help support her as well. You know, when people work you this hard to, you know, get as far as putting a book out, I think we need to support them, especially if we're book lovers, especially. All right. What do we have here? Oh, okay. Dead Weight, Essays on Hunger and Harm by Emmeline Klein. Now I'm choosing to read this because every now and again i don't know why i just do i i read books on health and that is a vast array of subject matters so i picked this one up um in dead weight emmeline klein recounts her struggle with disordered eating alongside the stories of other women historical figures, celebrities, girls she's known and loved. The stories of their own sickness, rock collections of interview subjects, and dispatches from social media rabbit holes. She challenges the stereotypes and renders statistics and science deeply personal and urgent. Um, Dead Weight makes the case that we are faced with a culture of suppression self-denial and self-harm, an insidious, pervasive, and dangerous American cult of femininity rooted in racism and misogyny. Drawing on a kaleidoscopic array of sources, Klein calls for a feminism that doesn't demand women shrink their bodies to increase their worth, urging radical acceptance of all our appetites instead for food, connection, and love. I am telling you what, I am loving the direction that women and the appearance of their bodies are going. Long gone are the 70s where women would sur survive on Dexatrim, AIDS, um, tab, and hard-boiled eggs. You know, welcome to the world. And it's sad that it took this long for women to be able to accept themselves or however uh, shape, whatever shape or form their body takes on and accept it and love it and be one with it and not give it a second thought what anybody else thinks about them. I am here for that. This next book I chose because it just seems brilliant to me. Lulu Dean's Little Library of Banned Books by Kristen Miller. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. We have a lady and she sets up a little library. I believe it's in her yard, her front yard. I'm not sure. Her front yard will go with that. Okay, so it's wholesome, Richie Cunningham, innocent as can be books, right? Well, 
some prankster in the neighborhood replaces the book, the wholesome book, with a banned book, a Judy Bloom book, if you will, and places the wholesome cover on the banned book. And before you know it, chaos and a muck ensues. And we're off to the races with this story. I cannot wait to read this. All right. Oh, my goodness. Should I pull the plug? You know what? I'm going to, no, no, I was going to pull the plug and continue on another video, but I'm not. Those of you who are dusting or rearranging or organizing and you want to hear me, blah, 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 I'm going to stick it out. This is going to be a long video, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. Quitters don't win and winners don't quit. We're here for it. Let me make some room. Okay, we're going to the bag of books. The big bag of books. Um, incidentally, I bought these books over three shopping trips. And I haven't had the time to get to these. Um, this bag of books is what I just purchased today at my local Barnes & Noble. These other two I purchased within within the month of September and we're only on seven. Yikes. No, no. Am I that bad? <laughs> you know, sorry, not sorry. I'm never going to apologize for buying a book. Okay. So I, you know, I'm getting into the spooky reads. So we're, 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 we're there. We're there for it. Okay. I thought I just loved the story about a haunted house and there's definitely not enough stories about werewolves. I'm kind of over the Draculas and Frankenstein isn't really haunting, you know? So I, I need a spooker and the exorcist didn't do it for me. And nor did, I can never say this one, Amityville Horror. There. That didn't do for me either. I don't know. I chose Goblin. It's a novel in six novellas. Every small town has its ways. Josh Mallerman. I am new to him. This is a must-read horror. I find myself getting more and more into the horror reads. And I am telling you, I'm a nonfiction reader, I'm a memoir reader, and I am a historical fiction reader. I'm not a horror reader, um, but I will dabble in it come the season. I'm a true crime reader. Who am I ever? True crime reader. But um, I'm getting more and more into these horror novels. I, I like ever since I read The Exorcist, I found it. Awful for me to say. I found it comical. Ooh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. But anyways, Goblin, this is what I chose. Goblin seems like any other ordinary small town, but with master storyteller Josh Mallerman as your tour guide, you'll discover the secrets that hide behind its closed doors. From a man willing to prove his love piece by piece to a man whose fear threatens to drive him to madness from a big game hunter undertaking the greatest hunt of his life to an aspiring magician who wishes to learn from the greatest in the world and gets more than he bargained for a zookeeper who feels a mysterious kinship with the animals in his care to a maze so elaborate no one has ever solved it these six novellas tell the story of a place where the rain is always falling, nighttime is always near, and your darkest fears and desires await. Welcome to Goblin. I feel like I should have inserted a diabolical laugh. Moseying on. Had to get this one. It was at the checkout. I'm gonna get this little sticker off it, um, if I can, because I I want you to see the 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 
cover. It's fabulous. I love it. Oh, I would get a sticker that's defective. I would. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Should we leave the sticker on? Because it is, it is being a troublemaker. It is. It's not even going to come off clean. But you're going to get... Oh, that is horrible. That is terrible. How could they do that? How could they do that? You know what they should do? They should put the sticker on the back of the darn book, huh? Not the front. Okay. If they must sticker. Okay. Kate... The Camillo, the puppets of a spell horse. They, it just it intrigues me. Listen to this. Tell me if it doesn't intrigue you. Trapped in a trunk. Five puppets. A king, a wolf, a girl, a boy, an owl. Comfort one another in the dark. Individually, they dream of song and light, purpose and glory. But they know that together they are part of a larger story Bonded by the heart's mysteries. Oh, I want to know. I want to know what these puppets in the trunk are feeling and thinking and experiencing. I chose it. And I'm not sorry. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you're going to be like, Floss, you're off your rocker. You're off your rocker. Why did Why did you choose this, choose this one? I'm going to tell you. My childhood neighborhood was heavily populated with children and ah, uh, coincidentally, it was the 70s. Every stinking child grew up on, <laughs> oh, hee-haw. We grew up on hee-haw. So I have read many a story about George and many a story about Tammy. So I'm already invested in that relationship and I need to know what the heck is going on in this one. Cocaine and Rhinestones, A History of George Jones and Tammy Wynette. It's by Tyler Mahan Co. with illustrations by Wayne White. I, I, I have to, I am, I'm already invest it since a child. I can't abandon ship now. That's why I chose that one. Okay, so moving on, listen, listen to this groovy one. The Witch's Daughter, My Mother, Her Magic, and the Madness That Bound Us. It's a memoir by Orenda Think. I do not know who she is. My apologies, but I am going to find out. Um, it's captivating. Each night, Orenda Fink's darkly charismatic mother perches on a kitchen stool and insists that she and Orenda are magic. Orenda's mother claims to be a witch who uses her magic to protect the family from the outside world, but Orenda's childhood is marked by instability, uncertainty. Her family moves from town to town, chasing a fresh start whenever the money runs out. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm just going to leave it there. Maybe I've intrigued you. Maybe I haven't, but you know, I, I love a good true story. I'm not going to lie. Ashley Poston wrote a novel, love story. I love the cover. I love the colors, the bright cheeriness of it. And I love a good love story every now and again. I am currently in the middle of, well, it's not a love story. It is Joe Nutton's Guide to Life. I needed it to come out of The Exorcist because I like balance. So I like to have love stories like this on hand, you know, to just break up the monotony, the, you know, to, to not give me any sort of strategy. I like willy-nilly. I like surprises. Sometimes I like chaos. Um, we have, let's see. Coming near the end, folks. Coming near the end. I'm in a spooky season read, and I've only have I only read two Stephen King novels, Holly and It. 
And I thought I would never read Pet Cemetery because I just don't want to know what they do to the animals. But my girlfriend didn't work is reading it. And she said there was no animal abuse other than like natural causes or, you know, everyday occurrences. But nothing like traumatic is happening to, to make the animals die because I don't think I could handle it. So let's see, did I go with it? I did. I went specifically for it. Wait till you see this copy. Wait till you see it. Can you even believe it? Wow. I can't even believe somebody would have left this on the shelf. They had like a gazillion pet cemeteries, but they only had one that looked like this. And, and I'm happy about that. Um, so I'm going to be reading some Stephen King this spooky season, definitely. I'm not going to tell you what this is about because most of you know I'm late coming to the show with Stephen King and his horror. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to bother to say what it's about. Most of you already know. I'm probably the only fool out there that doesn't. Okay, so while we're looking at Stephen King, let's just... Keep on looking at Stephen King. I could not believe this cover either. Christine, isn't that fabulous? They are doing fabulous things with the covers these days. I'm not even going to go into detail about what this is about. You know, I've heard so many things about this book. I've never read it. I've never seen the movie. I do know my daughter-in-law is named Christine after her father saw this movie. Hmm. I'm going to find out why. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny. My granddaughter, her name is Lydia, and she was named after Lydia in Beetlejuice. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm trying to get her to say la la Lydia, and she says wa wa Lydia. All right. I'm going to say that. Oh, oh, oh. We got two. We got two of them. I don't know, even know which one to say for last. I'm going to say that one for last. Obituary. The Big Hot Book of Death by Spencer Henry and Madison Rice. Look at that. Look at that. Thing of beauty. Beauty. Dear reader, we're so glad you're here. We can assume a lot of things about you by the fact that you decided to pick up a book subtitled The Big Hot Book of Death. Are you big, hot, dead? None of these are prerequisites to enjoy the material to follow. We're just curious. In fact, curiosity is how we landed ourselves here in the first place. We, Spencer Henry and Madison Reyes, sort of fell into the world of the macabre stemming from a long history of sending each other the most outlandish obituaries we can find that somehow evolved into a podcast and then what do you know a book a whole book so what can you expect a romp through death you might shed some tears or fall into a fit of laughter honestly we hope you experience an entire range of emotions as you flip through the big hot book of death because let's face it that's life it's fun, it's unpredictable, and sometimes it's uh, uh, sucks. <laughs> so allow us to take your mind off the mundane and into the insane. Oh my goodness. Take me there. Take me there. And the next one, look at this fabulous, fabulous cover. It's by Ainsley Hogarth. Look, look at that. It's giving off 1970s housewifey vibes. I love it. When Ralph and Abby Lamb move in with Ralph's mother, Laura, Abby hopes it's just what she and her mother-in-law need to finally connect. After a traumatic childhood, Abby is desperate for a mother figure, especially now that she and Ralph are trying to become parents themselves. Abby just has so much love to give to Ralph, to Laura, and to Mrs. Bondi, her favorite resident at the long-term care home where she works. 
but Laura isn't interested in bonding with her daughter-in-law. She's venomous, cruel, and especially to Abby. And life with her is hellish. All right, that's it. We did it. Do we have an empty bag? We did it. We have an empty bag. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me. You're a real trooper. Until we meet again, know that I truly love you. Do not let those bad days win. And when you dream, make sure you're dreaming big.